Hello Geology 105. Once again, my name is Shelby Morgan. I am a sophomore here at the University of Kansas and I'm currently majoring in journalism. As our semester is beginning to close out, we fall into our final oral presentation. I chose the Western Interior Seaway as my topic, which is also known as the ocean that covered Kansas, the Creation Seaway, and the neo Raran Sea. This topic intrigued me the most because the sea was once where we are living our lives today. So initially your first thought is probably, wait, we go to the University of Kansas, in Kansas, a landlocked, very flat, and some say very boring state. There is no ocean even relatively near us. What do you mean the ocean that covered Kansas? Well, according to oldearth.org, during the Creaceous period, the seaway ran through the middle of North America, leaving it in two separate pieces. The seaway formed when the North American tectonic plate collided with the Farallon plate. Now pause. You may be thinking, what is the Farallon plate? I don't believe we have those anymore. You are correct. In today's modern world, we no longer have the Farallon plate rumbling below us, but there was at one point. According to Brown University, if you were to travel back in time about 100 million years, you would see that this plate nestled in between the North American plate and the Pacific plate. At this time, the North American and Pacific plates were converging. While this process was happening, the Farallon plate ended up going through the process of subduction. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Subduction is the sideways and downward movement of the edge of a plate of the Earth's crust into the mantle beneath another plate, according to Google Dictionary, and for the most part slid underneath the North American plate, while small sections remained above the plate and eventually connected to the Pacific plate. Over time, the Farallon plate eventually sank and fell into join the mantle of the crust. So even though this plate no longer exists as one of our main tectonic plates, it was a crucial part of the formation of the Western Interior Seaway. Now going back to the North American and Farallon plate colliding. This collision caused a foreland basin running through the middle of north of the North American continent. This now low-lying region was below sea level. The combination paired with the high sea levels that were found in the Cretaceous period made it extremely easy for the Gulf of Mexico waters to flow up into the land and for the Arctic Ocean waters to flow down into the land. These two bodies of water met somewhere in the middle and created such a mass of water that it created a seaway. The seaway went from the Rocky Mountains to the Appalachians at its largest point, being 620 miles wide. How nice would it be if we could go if we could drive an hour or so to take a dip in the ocean of Kansas. I could for sure go for that on the weekends. Yet I don't know if I could handle having to live mid creaceous period about a hundred million years ago when the sea was forming. I heard they don't have malls but have dinosaurs and I don't know if I could handle that type of trade-off. The western interior seaway was home to a large amount of different creatures. There was everything from marine reptiles birds, sharks, and plethora of different invertebrates. According to fossilmuseum.net, the sea was shallow and home to many different species of marine life. A notable fossil that has been recorded and recovered is the mossoer. A fossil of this species can actually be found in the Natural History Museum right here at KU. Mossoars are recorded to have grown to a whopping 60 feet long and can be seen at the entryway of the museum. I know this because for another geology class, we took a field trip to the museum in Dyke Hall, and I must say it was very cool, even for someone not necessarily into geology. Looking up and seeing a 60 foot skeleton was something that I really enjoyed. However, there was not a fossil of a squalor Squillera pork, a shark, shark that was often found swimming its way through the western interior seaway. The squillera pork was identified as being a member of the seaway. Scientists were able to identify these fossils due to their preservation of teeth. According to elastomerresearch.org, 
This breed of shark can be easily identified by its unique tooth. Their teeth re are relatively thin and resemble a rose thorn. Once again, according to lastmillresearch.org, they were very pointy and blade-like. From the finding of their teeth, it has been estimated that the sharks were around 16 feet long, so something you would not want to swim around with. Two other big creatures that have been found to live in the seabay is the Zypactinus coming in at 18 feet long and the Echodectes approximately being over 10 feet long, according to fossilmuseum.net. Don't be fooled. There were smaller species swimming through the western interior seaway. These species have been invertebrates, which as we all know, are creatures that did not have a backbone. Fossils were preserved extremely well from the seaway due to it being on the shallow side, around 600 feet throughout, and the bottom being mud. The bottom being mud helps preservation due to the fact when the animals die, they end up falling to the bottom and then being engulfed in the oxygen-free mud. And then, when the seaway dried up and millions of years later, scientists were able to find these impeccable fossils thanks to the mud. Scientists have found a plethora of these fossils in the Monument, monument of Rocks of Kansas. These are chalk formations that have survived from around 80 million years ago. In fact, they are a national nature landmark deemed by the U.S. Department of the Interior. These formations rise up to 700 feet above the ground and were formed from carbonate deposits that existed in the western interior way in western interior seaway. There is one more creature that roamed the western interior seaway that I want to bring attention to, the Hesperoni. This bird, these birds were not what you would think of a modern day bird, well maybe penguins, because the Hesperoni did not fly. Rather, it swam through the water. How did it swim, you may ask? It used its big wings as a sort of a propeller and webbed feet for kicking through the water. I really wish I could have seen that one. According to National Geographic, this bird survived by using its sharp beak to swoop down into the water and grab fish, and it is believed that they used their tails to navigate going deeper into the water. These species lives were avid and comfortable for the 60 million years that the western interior seaway was in existence. However, according to the macroevolution.net, the seaway was in fact only around, only around for approximately 60 million years, from 130 to 70 MYA. And for those of you who don't know, MYA stands for millions of years ago, because somehow I did not know that after all this time researching. <laughs> the seaway began to close up towards the end of the Cretaceous period when the Laramide Orogeny began. The Laramide Orogeny lasted for about 40 million years, and during that time, mountains were springing up every which way in North and South America. These mountain ranges were ca caused by flat slab subduction occurring to the oceanic crust in at a shallow angle offering no magnetism. There is talk that the oceanic lithosphere assisted to the process by dragging the core of the continental lithosphere that we that was above, according to Grant Fools. Anyway, getting back to how the Sea of Kansas disappeared. This Larmide organy lifted the mud bottom of the lagoons in the sand beach, which later turned into shale and sandstone, as scientists have discovered fossils in. This caused the seaway to split into two right, it's that it caused it to split into two right around the North and South Dakotas, according to Stephen Stanley. The seaway then began to shrink in size, moving south, leading to the Gulf of Mexico. Scientists have found a lot about the fossils in the way that the seaway closed due to all of the sandbanks that have it turned into sandstone and again the shale. A lot of the fossils were found in these and they were also able to see where the seaway 
split and how it gradually turned back over time and reversed the process and became land again. And from that, you can tell because of how old a rock is and things of that nature. The Western Interior Seaway is definitely something that would be very interesting if it was still around today. But now we get to live here and go to KU. <laughs> Thank you so much.